Hello everyone, welcome back again to Plax's uh, 3D course from Theory to Practice. This is going to be lesson uh, 63, uh, prediction of a sui liquefaction using UBC 3D PLM model in Plax's uh, 3D. So in uh, this tutorial we are going to predict to estimate whether uh, the liquefaction will occur or not using uh, Plax's uh, 3D and using this constitutive uh, models. So before we uh, start uh, modeling in Plax's uh, 3D, I will uh, shortly talk about uh, the liquefaction and what is the liquefaction and how it occurs and uh, how we are going to uh, simulate uh, the liquefaction in Plax's uh, 3D and also what are the parameters that uh, need to uh, define using these uh, constitutive models. Uh, liquefaction occurs when uh, saturated loose soils like uh, sandy soil or silt temporarily lose uh, their strength during an earthquake. So uh, this is causing to act like a liquid. Uh, when a ground shaking uh, when we have an earthquake or a ground shaking so this uh, increases a water pressure between a soil particles and uh, weakening their load bearing capacity and uh, uh, leading to instability set instability and settlement and potential uh, structural uh, damage so if we look at the uh, columns formula which defines uh, the shear uh, strength of uh, cohesionless soils we can see that the uh, shear strength equal effective uh, stress times ton of ton of internal friction angle of the soil so as we know according to the Terzaghi's formula the effective uh, stress equal uh, the uh, total vertical uh, uh, stress minus the power water pressure so during the earthquake the power water pressure increases so it becomes a uh, power water pressure uh, plus change of changes in power water pressure so as uh, this uh, value increases and it becomes more than the total vertical uh, stress so the effective uh, stress of the soil becomes uh, zero so in uh, this case uh, the soil has no uh, stress or uh, the soil does not uh, resistance any uh, load so the in this uh, situation the liquefaction occurs and the soil uh, behaves like a liquid so to estimate uh, the risk of the liquefaction uh, it is very important to uh, identify predisposing factors such as uh, soil characteristics and triggering factors like earthquake magnitude and uh, ground motion acceleration. Uh, there are some uh, semi empirical methods in the literature which can be used for determination the potential for liquefaction at a site during the earthquake. So as I said in uh, this example we will use uh, this constitutive models uh, it is called UBC uh, 3D PLM model it is uh, an effective elastoplastic uh, constitutive models that uh, uh, which is uh, able to simulate the liquefaction behavior of a granular soil like a fine sand and uh, silty sand under uh, seismic loading actually to uh, estimate the liquefaction potential uh, first a dynamic uh, site response analysis is uh, required which is performed uh, and uh, it should define the geotechnical model and seismic input motion also extensive uh, soil investigations and various laboratory tests are uh, required such as a cross hole and downhole in two test uh, also uh, these are in uh, stool test also uh, a laboratory test is like a uh, cyclic triaxial or cyclic directed simple shear test and resonant column test are essential to exactly determine the soil properties uh, for uh, estimating the uh, liquefaction potential however 
uh, often only uh, drained triaxial test uh, data or other limited data are available for uh, model uh, input. Uh, that's why there are some uh, uh, simplified uh, method which are based on uh, SPT standard penetration test to uh, predict or to estimate the parameters of uh, these constitutive models for using Implexus uh, 3D. So uh, the parameters of uh, the UBC 3D PLM model. Uh, usually in earthquake engineering when uh, the one set of liquefaction is the modeling target a cyclic triaxial or cyclic direct simple shear test is the proper way to extract all the parameters for uh, these constitutive models. So uh, in general uh, these two tests are uh, these two uh, laboratory tests uh, we can extract all the parameters of these uh, constitutive models from the cyclic triaxial or uh, cyclic direct simple uh, shear test. Uh, however, uh, in, in some situations only data from a drainage triaxial test or in situ SPT uh, tests are available. Uh, that's why uh, some uh, researcher uh, some researchers have uh, some researchers uh, found some uh, semi-empirical equations to uh, uh, to calc to determine uh, the parameters of the UBC uh, 3D PLM uh, model for uh, based on the standard penetration uh, test. Uh, generally, the uh, we uh, the stiffness parameters of uh, these models are listed in here. We have uh, K sub uh, B. Uh, asterisk E we also have this one and uh, uh, the uh, powers like ME, NE, NP and uh, reference pressures so uh, K sub B asterisk E is an elastic bulk uh, modulus factor actually uh, all uh, these uh, parameters are uh, unitless they are just a factor except the uh, reference pressure uh, also, uh, K sub G asterisk E is an elastic shear modulus factor, and uh, K sub G asterisk P is a plastic shear modulus, and also these uh, are the relationship uh, for uh, the bulk modulus and uh, these factors, and uh, the shear modulus and uh, uh, these uh, shear elastic uh, factors. Also, we have uh, these uh, were the stiffness parameters of this model. Also, we have uh, strength parameters, uh, phi CV, which is a constant volume friction angle, also peak friction angle. Also, we have a cohesion and tension cutoff. Uh, usually, the co we use a zero for cohesion because, uh, as uh, we mentioned before, the liquefaction mostly occur in uh, fine uh, sandy soil or silty sand and uh, mostly the cohesion is zero. Also we have some advanced parameters uh, for uh, this model which is a failure ratio and uh, uh, corrected uh, SPT value. Also we have the other two factors which is a densification factor and post liquefaction uh, factor. So in here we will uh, we will uh, explain how can we extract all these uh, factors uh, based on uh, corrected SPT uh, value. So uh, these two researchers proposed uh, uh, some uh, semi-empirical equations to uh, to determine or extract uh, the uh, parameters of the UBC uh, 3D PLM model from uh, SPT for the generic for the initial generic calibration for the UBC uh, sand uh, model. Uh, after these uh, two researchers and uh, these researchers in uh, 2013. Uh, based on uh, the work done by these two researchers, find uh, these uh, correlations for uh, estimating or extracting the uh, UBC uh, uh, 3D PLM model based on the SPT. So as uh, we as we can see, uh, the uh, stiffness parameters are listed in here. They are very simple. Uh, 
uh, empirical uh, correlation and can be easily uh, determined or estimated from the corrected SPT uh, value. Uh, also, uh, the, we have the indexes parameters like ME, NE, and uh, MP. Uh, these uh, parameters should be actually should be uh, calibrated uh, by using care fitting. Uh, we can we can use uh, these uh, values. Uh, for example, the range uh, of these uh, three parameters is uh, very between zero to one. The suggested uh, default values uh, for ME and NE is 0 0.5, also for NP uh, 0 0.4. Actually, I suggest you to uh, to read the UBC uh, 3D PLA model from the Plaxis uh, material uh, manual. Uh, it is uh, extensively explained. Everything is explained in here. Uh, also, for the strength parameters like a uh, constant uh, volume friction angle, also the peak friction angle and cohesion, generally the cohesion is uh, zero and the relationship between the constant uh, friction angle and the peak friction angle uh, also uh, based uh, on the corrected uh, SPT value uh, can be far the, uh, the correlation between uh, these two parameters are shown in here so for uh, for uh, estimation of the peak friction angle uh, this formula can be used by uh, uh, mine 2011 so first we will uh, use the peak friction angle from uh, this formula which is based on uh, corrected SPT value and after that we will uh, easily find the uh, constant friction angle from uh, this correlation uh, regarding the advanced uh, parameters uh, like uh, R sub F, uh, F uh, sub dense and F sub E post, uh, the, these factors, for example, the F uh, sub dense is a densification factor, which is, uh, it is a multiplier that controls the scaling of plastic shear modulus factor during the secondary loading and the, uh, the acceptable range is between uh, 0 to 1 and uh, these two researchers uh, suggested or recommended uh, these uh, factors should be used as a unit or as a one because uh, uh, they say the variation or the densification does not uh, significantly affect the liquefaction uh, triggering. Also regarding the AFE post which is the parameter to adjust uh, a post liquefaction behavior and also the acceptable range of this uh, factor is between 0 to 1 and uh, the value between 0 0.2 to 1 is uh, recommended. Uh, the failure ratio RF, uh, also these two researchers uh, find or suggested uh, this formula should be used for uh, determining or estima estimating the uh, failure ratio and uh, also it should not, uh, it should be, uh, it should be equal, uh, sorry it should be less uh, than uh, 0 0.9 and uh, the failure ratio in plexus uh, has a default value of 0 0.9 but also it can be uh, estimated uh, based on the SPT as we uh, mentioned uh, before so what what are the co consequences of a liquefaction uh, we know actually it is uh, uh, when the liquefaction occur, it uh, causes many uh, consequences like a loss of bearing capacity because liquefied soil uh, lose uh, strength and cannot support uh, uh, building so uh, it causes a high value of settlement or uh, tilting of the structure or collapsing uh, the building. Also, uh, uh, liquefaction can cause a horizontal ground uh, movement uh, so this is uh, damaged pipelines, roads and uh, other infrastructures. Uh, 
Also, during the equifaction, a sand uh, boiling occurs. Uh, this is because excess pore water pressure forces water and uh, uh, sand to the surface, so it forms like a sand boiling, indicating the liquefaction uh, below. Also, uh, as I mentioned before, the when uh, as a soil compact and pressure uh, water pressure dissipates, the ground can settle and causing the further uh, damage to uh, any uh, structure on the ground. Uh, to define or to uh, simulate the liquefaction in plexus, uh, we need the UBC uh, 3D PLM uh, um, uh, models as uh, we uh, defined or uh, talked about all uh, the parameters also we need to apply the earthquake in uh, plexus because the liquefaction occurs when there's a uh, ground shaking uh, like an earthquake actually we will not uh, uh, talk about the earthquake in uh, this uh, lesson i suggest you to uh, refer lesson uh, 60 for uh, 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 to know how you can how how we how we uh, apply the uh, seismic analysis using Plexus uh, 3D, also define uh, boundary condition and uh, uh, other uh, other uh, things like uh, uh, drift correction or time stepping. Uh, please refer to lesson uh, 60. Uh, actually, before we uh, before we uh, before we proceed to mesh, uh, there is uh, something I want to mention uh, here. In a structure in structure mode, uh, we should define uh, the uh, seismic uh, input uh, seismic input uh, parameters, and also we have to. Uh, define these uh, two uh, uh, surfaces and uh, the bottom uh, surfaces so for uh, earthquake analysis please uh, refer to lesson uh, 60 we uh, uh, we talked about uh, uh, every parameters uh, or how we uh, import and uh, define the earthquake in plexus uh, 3d again we used uh, this uh, acceleration time uh, history data uh, so I suggest you see the lesson uh, 60 uh, to uh, be familiar how to define or how to apply the earthquake at uh, the base of uh, the model after that we uh, proceed to mesh and we generate mesh and after uh, that we uh, proceed to staged construction so in uh, this example we will have the initial phase and we will have the earthquake uh, uh, phase so in uh, earthquake phase we will uh, use a dynamic time interval as a uh, 10 second and uh, we will uh, use the dynamic uh, as a calculation uh, type and uh, also uh, for uh, max steps we use uh, 100 and the number of sub steps is equal to also if you want to uh, uh, make animation you have to increase uh, the value maximum number of uh, steps to be uh, stored i will use 250 in uh, this example okay and uh, right now everything is uh, okay so uh, also you should be uh, careful about uh, the uh, boundary condition of uh, the dynamic analysis so uh, because we apply the earthquake in uh, this direction uh, the boundary condition for uh, this uh, and uh, the boundary condition in x direction should be free filled and we don't have boundary condition in y direction and also at uh, the bottom of the model we should use a comp uh, compliant uh, base Okay, the model is uh, ready and uh, we can uh, start the calculation.